All right, um, collinear and coplanar, when you look at those words, they both have the word co, or the prefix co, and how can we describe co? Together. together. Right, together. Um, or with. I, I actually forget what the, I looked it up on the internet, I forget exactly what it was, but yeah, the, it means that they go together. So if we have co, linear or coplanar that's like on the same line or on the same plane. Can we think of a real world example of something collinear? This might be kind of hard to think about. Think about something in real life that is like uh, 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 uh. Yeah! Who said that? That's the only one I could think about last bell. Christmas lights on a string kind of look collinear. It's not 100% collinear because they get all not liney. But, yeah, that's a very good example. Can anybody else think of an example of, yes, Liam? Highway. Highway, say that again? Exits, exits like, um, if you're thinking, like, zooming really far out, is that what you're talking about? How they're exit, exit, exit? Is that what you're thinking? That's a good one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Another one I thought about was if if I'm using my bulletin board over there and I'm sticking thumbtacks all in a line because I want to line something up. I, I don't know. Maybe people, oh, oh, I did think of a roller coaster like you're sitting in the car going up a hill or something. I don't know. Those are real world examples. How about a real world example for something coplanar? Coplanar. In the same plane. Real world example. Oh, is that one harder? That one's easier for me. First of all, I apologize, but I am dang good at art, so please try not to be too jealous, okay? Of my art skills. That's a table. And after I have dinner with my children, this is what my table looks like. And actually, this is what my floor looks like, too. Because they're, they're messy. And they spill crumbs everywhere. So my table, with a bunch of crumbs all over it, points on a, the same plane, coplanar. And then my floor, which is a plane, a different plane than my table. There we go. There's my real life example of some stuff that's coplanar. And then they drop their spaghetti, so we've got some lines on there too. The spaghetti is, is it's not cooked. Just kidding. <laughs> like it. Just kidding. Okay. So there's my real life example of coplanar. Naming array, so that people have trouble with, naming array. Remember, we first identify the what. What's the first thing we have to write down when we name a play? Uh, 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 mm, array. Hmm? Say it again, hon. The end point. We just have one for, um, for rays, end point. And then once we name the endpoint, so for example right here, Q, once we name the endpoint, we look and it passes through any other points. Oh, it passes through P. You only list one other point, just one other point that it passes through. It doesn't matter if it passes through 17 other points. R, S, T, V. It doesn't matter how many points it passes through. You just use two points, the endpoint and any other point on that ray. And then it does go left to right the way you read it. It does not go the other direction. All right, example three, part of it got cut off. So that part that got cut off should say ray E S. So this says that ray E S and ray F E form a line. So we're going to draw E. and S. They form a line. Are they opposite rays? Here's ray ES. 
here's ray Fe. There? Yeah, you're right. So opposite rays share the same end point. So these overlap, they're going towards each other. They do form a line, but they are not opposite rays. So opposite rays share the same end point. So you are correct. Are they opposite rays? No. Opposite rays share the same end point. <coughs> if I have two, I'm on the next one, intersection. If I have two lines that intersect, and here is a picture, two lines that intersect, their intersection of the two lines is a Point is a point. So you need to know that for your quiz. The intersection of two planes is a, and if you're not sure, I'm going to give you a real life example right now. I'm going to draw my classroom right over there. Here's my door. See, there's my door. You okay? And here is the front board with the projector. Here's two planes that intersect and it is a line. Excellent. See? Real life example. See? Don't be jealous of my art skill. Someday with practice you can be that good too. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a really short review of what to expect on the quiz tomorrow. Quiz? Questions for me? Questions? So you'll have a little bit of practice in your assignment today as well, so you can keep practicing with it. We're going to learn one more tiny little thing, just really teeny tiny. This is called union versus intersection. We've been talking about intersections. We have not talked about union yet. <clears throat> the intersection of two sets is a set of elements in which are in both sets. When we talk about union, we're talking about it has to be in both sets. Now, if the word set and elements are just like way up here, don't worry, you'll get it in just a moment. Okay, sets um, would be collections, and elements is the stuff inside of that collection. I know you have done these before. Where you have a Venn diagram, and A and B would be the different sets, and the stuff inside it would be the element, and then where they overlap is the intersection. And with the word intersection, we use and. This and that. They have to be in both. And I'll, I'll highlight the word and in a moment. And then the word union of two sets is a set of the elements that are in either set. So um, union, you can think about like a marriage where we're coming together and we're bringing everything we have together. So maybe um, mom has three kids and dad has four kids and union, we're like putting it all together. Now we have a family of seven kids, right? That's the union where everybody's now included, plus the parents, nine people, okay? So union comes together and then intersection is overlapping. There is symbols that mean this. So you, when you see the symbol, you have to know that intersection is that symbol. And union is that symbol. So I'm not going to use the words intersection. You're going to see this symbol. You can remember intersection if you know that intersection means and. If you know that it means and. Do you know that intersection means and? Look what I got right here. I have that symbol right in the middle of the word and. There you go. And has that N right in the middle. That didn't highlight very much. 
It did, but it can't really see it. Eh, okay. And then union, how can we remember that union is the U? Oh, that makes sense, right? The union is the U. Okay, that one makes sense. But union also means or, either or. So intersection is only what the sets share in common. These elements must appear in both sets. And then I said an item has to be and, has to be both in this one and in that. <coughs> if it's not in both sets, it's not part. Union has the U shape. It means to unite, to bring it all together. All of the elements in either set, all the siblings in either family come together and become this new family. An item in the union only needs to be in either set, and also it could be in both sets. So on the back of this, you'll see a, um, some practice that'll be just like the homework, just like our assignment. <clears throat> so the first thing that I like to do when I look at this is I like to think B, this shape C. Which one is this shape? Is this the and or the or? It's the and. It has the N, so it's like the and. And then the next one is the union, which is the or. And then this one's and, this one's or, and or. So I just like to kind of think about that. You could do it as you do each question or do them all ahead of time. It's up to you. <coughs> so now we're going to look at the sets. So he, these are sets. Sets are showed with the fancy brackets. That's a set of numbers. We're going to look at set B and set C. And we're trying to find out what is in both because it says and. So look at B and C. What numbers are in both? One and two, one and two. You put them in numerical order with fancy brackets. One, two, done. That's it. That's what's in both. How about B union C? So we take set B and set C and we join them. We unite them in, in holy matrimony. Now once we unite them, what numbers are in there? Zero. One, two, three, four, five. One is in there false. You do not write one more than one. That's wasted time and energy and pencil and pen. Next is A, intersection B. So intersection is and. It has to be in both. A and B. What's in both? Zero. Okay? So just the number zero gets in the fancy brackets. Do your best in drawing those. I know they're hard. D, A, union, B. So this could be either or. We're putting everybody together. We're uniting them. A and B. In numerical order, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Bless you. I'm going to stop talking for a moment while you think about what B and D would give us. Set B and set D. James, what does B and D have in common? Okay, so we put a set of nothing. That's what we do. It's called an empty set. Nothing's in there. And then B or D, look at B or D. Huh? Oh, you're so close. You see there's no three in there. Rachel. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to go 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. And then the last part of this, well, that's like not really geometry. How does it relate to geometry? 
One reason why we're doing these weird symbols um, is because they've been known to be on the air test. So I want to make sure you've seen them. Okay. So let's use it for geometry. A, B, intersection, B, C. What's intersection mean? And means where they're going to overlap. So I'm going to use some color for this one. A, B. Here's A, B. That has to overlap with B, C. B, C. Oh, I have a blue. So if I have a yellow and I have a blue highlighter, where they overlap would be green. Where is it green? Point B. And that's the only place. Point B. And then we have EC union EA. So union means we're coming together, we're uniting, or so what I need to do is I need to come over here and I need to look at EC and EA, rays EC and ray EA. So if you look, I did that in the same color because it's all becoming one. What figure did I just make in my pinkish purple color that will turn back on in a second? I made a line. I did. I made a line. So we need to name that line. How do we name lines? How many letters do we name a line with? Two. Or, or one lowercase, but I don't see any lowercases around, so it's going to be two uppercase letters. Give me two letters that are on this line. Okay, so we could call it line AC, and then with that you could also call it CA. You could also write out the word line AC, but you know what? I, I'm not going to waste time on this video writing every single possibility, but that's one way of writing AC. What's another version, what's another way we could write this exact same line but not using AC together? What's another? Hmm? AE, -E, right. We could do AE, and then we've got like three other ways we could write that. Or we could write EC would also work. So that would be kind of, you know, that, the union part is new. I'm not going to put the union and intersection on your quiz, but just naming that line could be on the quiz. Okay? So that is it for today's notes. Our assignment is the next page, front and back. Not too long. Um, a lot of people had questions about numbers two and three, just so you understand the directions. It's just for two and three. It says the end point of ray A, B is, and then you're supposed to circle A or B. That's all it's asking you to do. It looks a little confusing. That's all it's asking you to do. You've got lots of time. We have like 15 minutes to work on this in class. So go ahead and get started. Um, me as your math lead coach, I'm going to walk around and, and, and help you out and answer your questions and, and uh, you know, do stuff coaches do. Okay. <laughs>